Rub up your engines! Well, Ford again has increased the price of their electric F-150 Lightning, the electric pickup truck, right? Following old Elon, we'll just keep charging more for it, more and more and more. Now, the base one, which of course you can never find, you never, they always want to mark it up, but the base one starts at $56,000. Now, that's 60% more than it was supposed to be originally. So, just like old Elon, they just keep raising their prices. Now, you might wonder, why are they doing it? Well, they're only making a certain amount of them so far. There's a limited amount. There's a high demand, or they say so, so they charge more money for it. Instead of saying, we'll be loyal to our customers, they're buying our products, we'll give them the price we originally told, up it goes higher and higher and higher and higher. They're trying to sell an electric pickup truck that is new technology. Most pickup people are very leery about an electric pickup truck. I found people who bought these F-150 electric lightnings, right? None of them are pickup truck people. These are people, most of it is their first time they bought a pickup. They thought, oh, electric pickup, how interesting, I'll buy one, right? The regular truck guys who've been buying it for decades, all the ones I meet, said Scotty, you're gonna have to beat us with a stick over and over again to try to get us to buy an electric truck. We don't wanna be stuck in the middle of nowhere where we can't get it going, it runs out of power, and then what are we gonna do? We gotta tow it back someplace? No, they don't want electric pickup trucks now. They're only making a handful of these electric pickup trucks now. And yeah, it's a unique thing. People that wanted, oh, look, I'll get an electric pickup truck. Of course, they don't have range when you tow stuff, which is why people buy pickups to haul stuff, tow stuff. The range is shot the heck with that. They just decide, well, what the heck? We're selling them, so we'll just keep raising the price and see how much we can get for them. Well, eventually, crap will hit the fan. Whoever wants to buy these electric pickup trucks, they'll saturate that market, and then no one else is going to want them. The real truck guys do not want electric pickup trucks. That's a fact. I see that. I, I predicted it myself, but then when I talk to the truck guys, they all say, yeah, I don't want an electric truck. What a hassle. I got my truck. It works. There's gasoline all over the place or diesel. I am not going to switch to this electric stuff. It's a niche market, and if they keep upping it, maybe they'll sell all the ones they make to this niche market, but eventually, guess what happens to a niche market? It plateaus. It hits the glass ceiling, and then people aren't going to pay outrageous prices for vehicles that don't perform like a real pickup truck should. Well, it's not just me talking talking about the electric car manufacturer Rivian saying it's probably going down the tubes. Now a bunch of the stock guys are saying, the analysts are saying the same thing. I mean, it was $172 or something a share, and now it's going way down. They just are poorly managed. They had to deal with Mercedes three months ago. They were going to make electric trucks in Europe, and now they say, well, that deal's not coming to fruition. Little agreement thing we had going on with Mercedes, and it didn't work out, right? And of course, they all lie about stuff. Rivian puts out the information. Our reservation numbers last three months is rising. People are reserving more. They can't build them. They've hardly built any, right? And this nonsense of them talking about reservations, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. One company portfolio grader rated Rivian stock stock AD. <laughs> Right? That means really low. It's the bandwagon of electricity, electrical vehicles, right? Guess what? People are starting to fall off the bandwagon. I think the bandwagon, some of the wheels are even starting to come off. There's no infrastructure. Why is anybody thinking everybody's going to get rich like Elon? One guy makes a lot of money, and a lot of his money is just stock money anyways. It's balloon stuff. That is it real? Not really, but it looks on paper like it's real, and they all jump on the paper bandwagon. When Rivian came out, they just kept putting money in it, so it was billion billions and billions and billions. More money than Ford Motor Company, this company that, you know, just made a handful of cars, right? People fall for this stuff. And don't think the companies aren't giant pyramid schemes. The guys in the top make all the money, and then the people at the bottom all get screwed over if they invested in their own money in it. And I mean, imagine if you would actually buy one of their things at Rivian. And yeah, they go out, you're stuck with a car nobody makes parts for. Huh, they're spiraling down, and even the stock analysts now are saying, yeah, I'd stay away from that company. If you got any stock now, sell it before it's worthless. That's basically what they're telling people. Bobby Joe Bob says, what do you think of Euro spec 1990 Toyota Land Cruiser or Land Rover Defenders? I want to get one. I want to bring it back to the United States. What do you think? Interesting enough, they're both excellent vehicles. You might laugh at that and say, well, Scotty, you say Land Rovers are pieces of crap. No, if you watched that video I had out the other day, my neighbor in Rhode Island had a Land Rover Defender pickup truck that was phenomenal. Now, no horsepower. It went zero to 60 in like 22 seconds. But it's a diesel engine with a standard transmission can run forever. And of course, Toyota Land Cruisers are well made too. Now, the only thing is the European specs. Your thing is, if you're staying in Europe for a long time, yeah, go right ahead. The parts are available. But when you bring them to the United States, unfortunately, parts can be kind of a pain in the butt to get. Now, my neighbor doesn't care because his wife is English and they got contacts in England and they can get parts for the Land Rover Defender pickup truck in England 
send it over, no big deal. But for the normal person, bringing in cars from other countries can be a pain in the wazoo. I got quite a few people that import the fancy cars from Japan, like the Toyota Celica all track that they do rallies in and stuff. But when it comes to getting parts for them, it can be a pain in the wazoo. Zoo. Plus, analyzing the problems can be a problem too because they use a different OBD system in Japan than they do in the United States. So, if you want a toy to play with a little, you might think about for an everyday driver. If you are going to bring those things back to the United States, or if you're in the United States, you're somebody else, not this viewer, I wouldn't advise buying one of those unless you want a toy or you got connections in Europe or England, especially if you're looking at a Land Rover Defender because it's going to be expensive and hard to get parts for them. That's just how it goes. James sells it. Scotty, is it normal for the Ford Coyote engine to be noisy? Now, they make those Coyote engines to go fast and are powerful. And depending on the exhaust system you put on it, they can make a lot of noise or a little noise. Now, if you're talking about clickety clackety, that's not normal. Now, some of them will wear and the engines start wearing internally. When they're idling and you're taking off, you hear the engine itself clickety clackety. That's not normal. They should not make noise. Now, a lot of times you go to the dealers, oh, that's normal. And it's like, yeah, you look at a brand new one of those, it's not noisy, right? And then when it gets older, it may be normal for them to be noisy as they get old, but it shouldn't be that way. It shows internal wear inside the engine if it's the engine itself that's making noise and not the exhaust. Hi, he Zendera says, Scotty, would an engine powered by the hot air coming from the White House be more efficient than an electric vehicle? That's hilarious. Now, believe it or not, a lot of people ask me about, hey, why don't we have compressed air cars? You could just compress air and then you can use the air to drive the car and you go down the road. Well, people have actually made them, but there's only one problem. There isn't that much energy in compressed air. You can compress it in tanks, but it only compresses so far, and after a very short period of time of a few miles, you would run out of compressed air, and you'd have to compress the air again. <laughs> It would be kind of foolhardy. He wouldn't go all that far. You remember when you were kids? I don't know, maybe today they probably don't have them. When I was a kid, they had little balloon cars. Blow up the balloon, stick them on a the car, let go, and it would go down your house, you know? But I like the idea of the hot air from the White House, yes. Now, it might be a lot of hot air, endless hot air, right? It's only going to go so far. <laughs> Just like the hot air that's coming from it philosophically, it's only going to go so far. When the rubber hits the road, they'll see most of the stuff they're doing is total nonsense, and they have no idea what they're doing. Interesting enough, I was watching Peterson, he's an interesting Canadian guy, and he was showing how in the last few years, the Canadians have printed up like $400 billion of more money. There's nothing behind it, just printing up more money. And they're having this insane inflation going on there now that people can't afford to buy houses there because the houses are getting so expensive because this inflation that people are saying, well, the money, they're just printing it out. It's not worth much. Quit buy some real estate. That's worth money. So the people with the real estate just keep charging more and more and more and more. The price of houses has gone up 50%. Two years? That's just crazy. Off the whole nation. You gotta watch out what any of these politicians get involved in because they don't know what the heck they're doing. Bill Will 13 says, our Panther car money pits. Well, you know, those are like Lincoln's, the grandpa car, grand marquees, you know, grandma, grandpa cars. And they were well-built cars on solid frames, right? If you take care of them, they can last a long time. But like any Ford product was they start to get older, you know, 20, 30 years old. They can turn into money pits. They're electronics. I've seen older ones. People bring them to me and I'm like, you know, your electronics are all out. And I'll say some of these computer modules, you can't even buy them anymore. You're going to have to go used. And a used computer module, you're really rolling the dice there and hoping it doesn't come up snake eyes. If they're not rusted though, and they've been taken care of and they're low enough mileage, they can be really good cars. But you know, anything gets to be 20, 30 years old. You're pushing it as an everyday driver, as a Boy, hey, why not? But as an everyday driver, the older they get, you, you're kind of taking a big chance. Use them for everyday drivers. Lionel Rivera says, Scotty, what do you think about Ram recalling 1.2 million trucks because the tailgate could open unexpectedly? Yeah, well, their quality's been going down the tubes a long time. It went down when Fiat bought Chrysler. Now Stellantis does it's even further down. Well, in this case, though, at least it's not hurting the people driving the trucks. It's hurting us, the people following them. Do not tailgate a Ram truck. That gate may open up and thing may fall and hit you. And definitely, if you have a motorcycle, don't get near a Ram truck. If the gate opens and crap comes flying out at you on a motorcycle, bad enough you're in a car, it'll destroy your car. But hey, it'll destroy you if you're on a motorcycle and you get it. And just like people have found out with these self-driving cars, don't get too close to them because there have been accidents with the GM and their self-driving vehicles. They'll just to stop in the middle of an intersection because it's a computer. It gets confused, and when it's confused, it stops so it doesn't run into anything.
anything. And a bunch of people were running to the back of them because for some unforeseen reason, the vehicle in front of them that was self-driving decided to stop because it was confused by the intersection. And then people slammed into them. So watch out what's happening in front of you when you're driving and stay away from Ram pickups. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.